Whatever the day, this village woman's gentle singing drifts throughout the rice fields, or Balana. This waterlogged land where she stands all day, trying to stop the weeds from gaining strength, holds one of Guinea-Bissau's most precious resources, rice. Sabado Diaz rises with the sun to spend each long day bending over this land in quiet solitude. Why are you here alone? Because all of my children are away in Bissau, studying. And your husband? My husband is that big man over there. He's my husband. Does he come to the Balana with you? No, it belongs to him, but he doesn't come to work. Why not? Because there's no money in working this land. The only people willing to work the land are women. The past year has been one which the people of Guinea-Bissau will never forget. This has been a terrible year. We're very tired. Since the war began, the children have received nothing. There's starvation everywhere. All we have left is this rice field. The banana is carefully cultivated in the hope of a generous crop. Every mouth depends on the harvest and on the work of this strong woman. I cannot sing anymore. Why not? Because there's no more milk for tomorrow. The milk is finished. The food is finished. How can I sing? The Republic of Guinea-Bissau has enjoyed relatively peaceful years since it won its independence from Portugal in 1974. But in June 1998, this vibrant population became the victims of yet another African war, which would draw in troops from neighboring countries. Today, there's a ceasefire, but previous ones have been broken. This is an African parable of defiance in the face of war. Members of the military took up arms against the government after the sacking of the army chief of staff. All-out civil war erupted on the 7th of June, 1988. Sydney is no older than 10, but has summoned all the strength he can muster to rebuild what the war has taken from him. The area of Baradua Judah, in the capital Bissau, suffered terribly during the violent days of June. When the rainy season arrived, it brought with it storms of a different nature. Sydney's family fled quickly to the interior of the country to stay with relatives, and there they've remained. Only Sydney has had the courage to return and face the wreckage. Have you come here by yourself? Yes. What for? To tidy up. Have you come many times? Yes. Why do you come alone? My mum doesn't want any of us to come. I have to run away. You run away, yes. Why do you run away? 
to come over and tidy up. I love tidying up. And you like this house, yes. Do you think you'll live here again? Yes, I think I'll live here again. Ever persistent, Sidney lives by the strength of his conviction that one day he'll return to his family's home, for good. A home that was devastated by bombs. They destroyed his bedroom, toys, clothes, shoes. But most of all, they destroyed his peace of mind. What makes you most upset? To see my mother crying. I want to come back here. You want to come back to this house? Yes. And you're afraid you won't be able to? Yes. Why do you like this house? I have many friends here. And if you go elsewhere, you'll lose them. Yes. Do you have any toys here? Yes. But my robot is broken. Your what? My robot. And my police car, too. The block of flats where Sydney lived was next to the airport road, a prime target for the bombings. When the revolution began, most people left this area in the hope of finding somewhere far away from the miseries of war. Abadu and his entire family packed and locked up and fled for three months. When they returned to Bissau, they discovered that the bombs were not the only thing to have invaded their home. Nothing was left, apart from the sofa, and that was because they couldn't carry it. They dragged it to the door, but they were unable to take it away. What did they take? They took the TV, video, stereo, fridge and freezer, six plates, the gas cooker, three mattresses, one for my bed and two of the children's mattresses. Amadou Balde is a statistical engineer, but since the revolution began, there's been no work or money on the horizon. At home, they've been forced to return to harder times. Gennado is using a traditional crusher for palm fruit to extract the flavor. Rice is cooked over a fire, which will be their only meal of the day. How do you manage to survive? Right now, it's very hard. Do you have money left? No. How do you live? When I was in Gabu, my mother managed to give me some money. She sold her cow and gave me the money to start life again. Slowly, Amado is rebuilding his life, something he's only able to achieve with the help of his family. Will you have to pay the carpenter here today? No, my cousin's helping me. He's a trader in the Bandon market, and he has his own house. He felt sorry for me, and he asked the carpenter to come and help me. My cousin will pay him. The majority of the people in the Bissau districts fled as Amadou did. Some went into the interior of the country, and some abroad. But Gabriela Ferreira did the opposite. She fled to the center of Bissau, to her home in Barra de St. Lucia. Her heart has never left the city. She's bound to her son, who refused to leave. My son stayed here. He would go and come back, but he always slept here. I was away, but I was always worried about him, thinking that a bomb might fall here. The house is made of zinc. Have you seen what's happened to the other houses? I was very worried for him. Gabriella's son was the youngest man in the neighborhood to stay in his he stayed in the where he'd always lived. People were lying in the streets because it was difficult to stay at home. People would come and stay under this mango tree. We'd lie on the ground, in the mornings, in the afternoons or at night. Some would go to the shelter. That's how we spent our days. Gabriella knows every corner of this neighborhood. She misses the old bustling atmosphere. Here in St. Lucia, 16 families had their lives destroyed. 16 houses were reduced to rubble. The survivors had nothing left. 
The few people that remained here would seek refuge under the ground. They would hide inside caves for as many hours as necessary 